Hi, so here are two gears that I've just made by using the sweep tool with the methods that I've shown you in the past that I have discovered were actually wrong. They work when you're creating gears of the same size, but that's kind of a pointless endeavor. It's kind of a fool's errand because why would you use gears that are the same size? If you're using the sweep tool to make herringbone or helical gears like this, you'll notice that if you have gears of different sizes, you know, think about this. The circumferences are obviously different. So if you travel the same radial distance, 15 degrees, like I have in both of these gears, you're going to travel a different radial, radian distance. You're going to travel a, a different actual distance, right? So these gears are not going to be able to mesh. You can tell just by giving them an ocular pat down that these gears, despite having the same twist angle, are not going to mesh. They don't have the same, uh, there's probably a good word for this, but I can't think of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo that. And you see here, I have two gears set up where there is a line that protrudes the length, the height of the gear that I want 10 millimeters from the center perpendicular to the plane. So basically all I've done to do that is I've gone into sketch on the top plane of the gear. I've selected the center of this face and making sure that 3D sketch was on, I just went up, you know, up 10 millimeters. Now there's actually a formula that we're going to use to get the twist angle that we need of our gears for them to mesh. And so that is just 360 times the total height of the gear when it's finished, which mine are going to be 10 when they're finished, times the tangent of the angle that you want them to twist by. If you want a 45 degree twist, like most, I don't know about most, but a lot of herringbone and helical gears are, the tangent of 45 degrees is just one. So you can just basically ignore that. Another thing to make sure is if you're using the calculators like in Google or just on your normal calculator, the default is gonna be radians. So you're gonna make sure that you're doing the tangent of 30 or however many degrees, okay? And then all of that divided by the modulus of the gear times the number of teeth that that gear has times pi. And just to make it crystal clear what's going on here, I'm gonna use three calculators, one for the numerator, one for the denominator, and then one to finish the equation. So in the numerator one, I'm gonna do 360 times 10, the height of the gear when it's finished, times 45, make sure we're in degrees, and grab trigonometry, the tangent, or sorry, not 45 degrees, I wanted to do 30. 360 times 10 times the tangent of 30. I'm doing this just to show you because the tangent of 45 is one equals, and that is our numerator, divided by the modulus of these gears is 2, times the number of teeth, on the small one is 24 times pi. And then I'm going to go over here, grab our numerator, and divide it by the denominator. And this gives us the total amount that we would twist. I'll show you in a second what this is. So we go over to the sweep tool. I always confuse sweep and loft for some reason. The sweep tool, and we select that path that we've predefined. For the distance, we're going to do half of the distance because we're going to mirror it back on itself. For helical gears, you don't need to do this. This is for herringbone only. We're going to paste the twist angle that we just got there, and we're going to divide it by two because we're only going half of the distance. We're going to go ahead and make that a new body, and I'm going to hide the old body. I'm going to go to create mirror and just mirror that whole body on its top. And that will give us a herringbone gear that if you just give it a quick ocular pat down, you can tell that that's about 30 degrees twist angle. Now, onto the other gear. We're going to do this one more time just to make sure that it's crystal clear. Clear all these calculators. On the numerator, we're going to do 360, again, times 10. It's going to be the exact same thing on the numerator, times the tangent of 30 equals. And on the other one, the modulus 2 times the number of teeth on this one is 64 times pi and that gives us our denom denominator. So grab the numerator, divide by the denominator, equals, and that gives us the twist angle for the big gear. Now, obviously this one's going to be smaller because a smaller degree twist on a larger circumference is going to travel a greater overall distance, right? Just by the nature of how circles work. Same exact thing, half the distance and half the twist angle. Create a new body, hide the old body because I don't care about it, and then mirror it on top of itself. Now, this is not a very precise measure, but it's one that I use a lot. I find that a lot of my viewers are here for 3D printing content anyway, so this works pretty well for that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line these gears up um, kind of as if they were meshing. It doesn't have to be perfect, and I'll show you why. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use the inspect features to look inside of the mesh between these two gears and see if there are any tolerance issues. So we're gonna go to inspect, section analysis, and grab one of these planes. We'll just do the top plane and you can see that these gears are overlapping we can't have that obviously but the reason is because when you create these herringbone gears they actually have to be uh one and an inverse in order for them to match so i'm just going to grab this one and we're just gonna 
flip it over real quick. Again, doesn't have to be perfect, but just something that you can get an idea. We're gonna go into section analysis here. And if you look at that, they mesh perfectly all the way down. Now, obviously, if you're 3D printing these, you're gonna have some tolerance issues. You could either select all of these little faces and offset them, or the easier way to do it is I just scale the entire body down by 1%, and that seems to work fairly well. So I'll throw that formula on the screen one more time as I'm closing here, just in case you need to pause the video on this screen. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.